Hello and welcome at Le Manoir. My name is Patrice and today I want to talk about a new plugin by Sound Particles which is called Space Controller. And the idea of this new plugin is for us Dolby Atmos mixers to be able to move objects in Dolby Atmos using our smartphone and point to the direction where we want the objects to go. And if you go on the website of Sound Particles, by the way, I am in no way endorsed nor paid by Sound Particles to make this video. Uh, so if you go to their website, you will find a video explaining how it works. And they've done the video with Pro Tools. Uh, and in, they explain that basically this plugin is actually like the other plugins, I uh, have a few of them and I really do like them, uh, are multi-channel plugins and they are not quite yet able to directly address Dolby Atmos objects and the workaround they found in Pro Tools is to record the automation to put the plugin on the actual audio track and not on the object track and record the automation and then copy and paste the automation uh, on the object track. And that gave me the idea that in Reaper we can do slightly better than that and let me show you how. Uh, for instance, I have this track here, which is basically a um, small sequence. And I want to uh, turn this track into one object. So what I've done and what I'm usually doing um, in Reaper is that I'm keeping my audio tracks on one side, I would say. And I create object tracks for those audio tracks that I want to turn into objects. I find it easier for several reasons, but I won't explain them now. Um, so basically I have this yellow track, which is my audio track, and it's not rooted to the master sound because uh, the master sound, I'm using it in Reaper as my main bed. Um, and so I want an object here. So my track is directly assigned to the, what I would call the object track, which is right here. And on this track, I have inserted both the Dolby Atmos music panner and the sound particles space controller. And what we can do in Reaper is link plugins parameters. Uh, first of all, you may notice that the space controller is bypassed because actually I don't want, it's a plugin that is basically treating sound because it's a multi-channel plugin, but I'm not interested by the sound going through it because that would mess the input of the Dolby Atmos production suite. And that's why I have it bypassed. And what I've done is that I have my parameters here x, y, z, which are the main parameters that I'm needing at the moment. So I've set them up at 0, 1 and 0, which mean dead center. And I've set up the same parameters here, x, y, z on the Dolby Atmos music panel, 0, 100 for y and z. And now what we can do is very basically uh, link them and we want the Dolby Atmos music panner to be some sort of a slave to the sound particles plugin. So what I'm doing here, I'm going into this param menu and in parameter modulation mini link, I will start with pan X and here I can enable modulation and I want to link it and I want to link it to the space controller which has a ton of parameters because it can go up in audio to 22.2. Um, but I just need, basically I will use it as a mono plugin. So I just want the X channel one. And now I can check that when I'm moving the X parameter here, the object, the Dolby Atmos will go to minus 100 to plus 100. Why? when the space controller goes from minus one to one, which is exactly what I want. So it's okay for this. Let's do the same thing with the Y uh, parameter. So I want to link the Dolby Atmos Y parameter to the space controller Y coordinate channel one. 
uh, and then I can check that when I move this from minus one, okay, that's minus 100 and plus 100, so that's cool with me. And then finally, the Y parameter, the Z, sorry, the Z parameter, and I want to link the Z parameter of the Dolby Atmos music panel to the Z coordinate channel one. And here there's a little tweak because this is zero, which means ground level, and this is 100 elevation. But I see that when I'm going from zero, it's actually 50 here. So it's only going halfway through. So what I have to do is do an offset of minus 50 here and change it to instead of 100%, that will be 200%. Uh, and so when I'm in zero here, I'm in zero on the Dolby at most music panel and when I'm 100 I'm 100 that might feel or seem a bit tedious to do but then again with Reaper what we can easily take both plugin and save them as an FX chain and so we can recall this combination with uh, it's this linking uh, in a single click uh, which is great uh, now it's time to set up the space controller with our smartphone. There's a companion app that you can freely download from their website and you need to connect it to your computer. You can connect them either in Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. I'm using Wi-Fi. I've tried Bluetooth, but that was not so reliable. Not the plugin itself, but the relationship between my Android phone and the Mac Pro here. So this has been a bit difficult. So I turned to Wi-Fi and then I had a problem because there's this button Wi-Fi setup here. And if you click on it, there's a QR code that you can actually uh, scan directly from your phone. And then your phone will get the IP address of your computer on the network. But it so happens that I'm using a Mac Pro trash can, which has two Ethernet ports, and I'm not using Wi-Fi with it. I don't need it. The first Ethernet port on my Mac is dedicated to audio over IP because I'm using the Ravenna protocol. Uh, and the second Ethernet port is um, dedicated to the local area network. And the plugin space controller only picks up the first network interface and you know that in the mac system preferences you can choose the order of the interfaces and i put of course the audio over ip first because it must have the greatest priority so uh, at first i couldn't connect in wi-fi and finally what i did is that i turned on the wi-fi on the mac pro so it got a, on the same network, it got a different IP address, but still I manually entered on the app the Ethernet IP address of the Mac and then they talked to each other. Uh, don't ask me why, but I think if someone at Sound Particles sees this video, I think it would be great to have here in this Wi Fi network setup a drop down menu because working. In Dolby Atmos, you will find many people using audio over IP, being Ravenna like me or Dante. And it means that most of those people will have several network interfaces on their computer. So it would be great if here we could have somewhere a drop down menu allowing to select which network interface we want the plugin to use. And a greater thing is that if we use several instances of the plugin, so we don't have to do that each time, uh, but just that the plugin could talk to each other and know they are on the same network because with this one app, you can control up to 128 instances of the plugin. So we see that it's really with Dolby Atmos in mind that this plugin has been designed. So that's where the fun begins because now we have obviously 
we can move things around. The way it works is very easy. The, the app has a large surface here and when you touch it, then it's in remote mode. If you point the telephone upwards, it will act on the Z parameter. And then if, we, if you take it back to horizontal, that will go back to zero. And of course, left, right, behind you, anywhere. That's when you hold the button. And if you just point your phone to another direction than the one where the object is, and just when you tap it, immediately the object goes straight to the position that you're showing, uh, which is uh, not only great, but also fun. Uh, so now it's the time for us to start recording automation. Then again, in Reaper, there's a preference that you may want to check, which is in the editing behavior automation in the preferences. And this automatically add envelopes when tweaking parameters in automation write modes is usually enabled. And maybe you want to disable this because we don't want to record the automation of the space controller. We just want to record the automation X, Y, Z from the Dolby Atmos music panel. And well, that's where the fun begins. Et voila, our automation is now recorded. So we can change back to trim read mode. And once you have recorded the automation, what I've noticed is that sometimes the link causes problem. And if you want to really recreate your moves, you can disable uh, the modulation uh, link uh, of the three parameters or possibly record the space controller instead of recording the Dolby Atmos music panel. There are plenty of interesting thing to do. So this will leave plenty of room for comments down below. As a conclusion, I, I would say, is this useful? Uh, personally, I don't have experience with joysticks. Moving objects around in a 3D audio space, it's quite likely that we need both hands, ideally. For the moment, I'm mostly doing it with a mouse, which can be, of course, very accurate compared to the accuracy of a smartphone in your hand. Uh, but it's fun. So I really encourage you to uh, try it and uh, let me know what you think. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye.